Hi everyone, welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'm your hostess Rose and today it's a rosy day because your hostess Rose is going to present these rose quartz earrings made with rose gold findings and rose gold wire. Ooh, I hope you like them. You know, rose quartz is a bit of a mm, underestimated stone. It's, it's fairly common. It's easy to find throughout the world, but I mean, look at it. Rose quartz is about seven on the most scale of hardness, diamond to 10. So this is a really tough stone and great for making jewelry. Rose quartz, okay. I'm gonna start with the hardest part first. And that's this little detail here on the bottom. That little bit of wire wrapping. First of all, I've got this rose gold filled wire. This is um, 18 gauge. And I want about four inches of that, but I want it nice and straight. I'm grabbing my nylon jawed pliers here just to straighten that out a little bit. Just slide it along there. We also have some wire straighteners, which are a great product for this, but I'm doing it quick and easy. So I want four inches of this to start with, which is probably too much, but too much is better than not enough. So I'm going to cut off four inches of that, being careful not to let the wire fly into anybody's face. So I've got my four inches of wire and I'm just going to put a little black dot at the two inch mark. Little black dot, just so I know where the two inch mark is and I don't have to rely on my faulty eyesight to estimate two inches. Okay, so we're gonna make this big loop in the center of the finding. And I'm going to grab some of my favorite tools. These are Wubber's mandrel pliers. Uh, they're a special plier that was developed by a wonderful lady. And she wanted pliers that have just a straight barrel here, unlike our normal cone-shaped round nose pliers, so that we can make a loop that's always the same, same size over and over and over, which is awesome. And if I can do this, I'm gonna show you what they look like. So up here at the tip, you see there's a bigger round and a smaller round. So you can use these pliers for two types of loops, two sizes of loops. I'm gonna use the bigger round for this. I'm gonna grip it right where I put that black mark. I'm going to wrap the plier up and, I mean the wire up and over. And I'm gonna wrap the other wire up and over. And there's our first loop. And the nice thing is, because I use these Wubbers pliers, I can make the same loop on a second earring. And that's the hard part about wire wrapping with earrings, making two that are the same. Ah! So <laughs> that's our first loop. The next loop, I'm going to use the smaller jaw and I'm gonna grip right here, right next to the first one. I want my jaw to be just like one wire width away. And I'll go up and over. Then I'm going to just turn my pliers a little bit so I can continue and go all the way around till I have mm, almost a straight line there across. <laughs> How easy is this, right? Use the Wubbers, they're great. And then, and I love the rose gold wire too, so here we go. Again, I'm gonna grip on this side just about one wire width away from the original loop. And I'm going to go up and over. Then I'm going to rotate my pliers a little bit so that I can finish the loop all the way around. And there we have my three loop section for the underside of this finding. Uh-huh, well, it's not perfect yet, so I do a little bit of refining here. Again, I've grabbed my nylon jawed pliers. I'm gonna give that a little squish. I'm gonna give that a little squish. I'm gonna make sure that this sort of fits here. And I'm going to trim off this excess wire. Now, this is rose gold filled wire, so it's, it's a, a wire that's worthy of being saved. So I'm going to actually nip this off and save the ends of that wire because um, of the value of it. Um, and I'm also, you notice these, these uh, nippers are sort of wedge shaped. That's because on this side, it makes a flush cut. On this side, it makes a wedgie cut. We don't want wedgies. We want to <laughs> keep it flat. So I'm using the flush side and nipping off the excess wire, which I will save for another project. Same on the other side. 
making sure my flush cut is in toward the piece I'm keeping. That's just spare wire. Okay. Make sure this is all flat and beautiful. I think I'll nip that just a little bit more. There we go. Flat and beautiful. And as you can still see my little black mark, no worries, a little, little bit of alcohol takes that off right away when you're done. Okay, now I have to attach it to this finding. <sighs> this is the hard part. This is the hard part, I think, for everyone. Now I'm going to use some, I think this is 26 gauge wire, some pretty fine wire, so it's easily bent. And I'm going to use about six inches of that. About mm, six inches of that. Again, that's probably too much. And I'm going to begin in the middle. Mm -hmm. I've got a bend in the middle of my wire. I'm going to wrap everything here on together. And I'm, it's like, um, I guess it'd be just like you know, putting a bread tie on, only more difficult because you want it to look pretty. Pretty is the hard part. So I've got that wrapped around or through my loop there. And I'm going to start wrapping this thing. I want it nice and tight. I want each wrap to be right next door to the next wrap. And whenever necessary, if I want it tighter, I will grab my chain nose pliers and I will give that thing a pull. Yeah, it's only 26 gauge wire, but it's tough enough. It can take a little bit of pressure. And I'm going to keep pu pulling it through here. Be careful you don't kink it. It's the kinks that will cause your wire to break. So I keep it smooth. Wrapping. With each coil going right next to the coil before it. Hope you can see that's happening. This is what's hold, going to hold that little decorative loop onto the bottom of my finding. Then I want to wrap a little bit the other way with the other tail of wire. And I will just keep wrapping until I've got this middle loop completely secured. And then I'm going to use just the same wire. And I'm just going to go over and start wrapping on the uh, smaller loops. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this wrap so you can come back and see how we do the final details. Come on back in a second. There we go. I've done all, all but the last little loop because I want to see you see that last little loop. On this last little piece, I'm going to pull it around behind the ear wire. Yes, I've decided this is the back. You can decide for yourself which one's the best looking, which, which side's the best, which side's not. Pull it around to the back, nip it off, saving that gold filled wire and I make sure that little tiny tail is tucked in there sort of in between because we wouldn't want to scratch anybody's neck when they're wearing the earring so make sure it's all smooth if necessary you can get out a file or something and smooth it out but looks pretty good I'm actually going to take the nylon jawed pl pliers too and give it a nice squeeze again make sure everything's there we go and nicely centered too. That I did eyeball it. Um, I did have to adjust a little bit by gripping the, the finding and the moving the little detail back or forth to get it centered. Okay, so that was the hard part. If you've made it that far, you've got it easy now. Next step is I'm going to add the little rose quartz. Isn't this pretty? It's a little faceted rose quartz. I love these little guys. Uh, it's a natural one too. It's not even dyed. So it's a little paler than the dyed ones, but I like the natural look. So I put that on a ball pin, a rose gold filled ball pin. And because it's only like a 26 gauge or 24 gauge, it's a very, very thin ball pin. I'm actually going to do a wrap loop. I know most of the time I do um, simple loops, but I'm going to do a wrap loop on this. So with my chain nose pliers, 
I make a 90 degree, bend, 90 degree bend in my wire, but I leave a little bit of a stem area. That's where the wrap will happen. And then with my regular little uh, round nose pliers, I will grip that. Wherever I grip it, that's the size of the loop I'll be making. And that's the advantage of these types of pliers as opposed to the Weber's. Up and over, change jaws, all the way, the rest of the way around. And some people can do this with their fingers. I cannot. I will take my chain nose pliers and make my wrap. And I'm kind of particular. I always use three wraps. I don't know. <laughs> I try and I try and make the same wraps on each earring so that they look the same. Like somebody's gonna look really, really closely at your earring and make sure you have the same number of wraps on each of your earrings. But people do. People do. Cut off that little extra bit of wire. This is why I like these um, pliers here because they have such a tiny tip. I can usually get in there and get that. There we go. And I do like to just flatten out that loop that I made at the top a little bit. So that is a wrap loop there. We also have more instructions for this sort of thing at firemountaingems.com with um, visual aids that are a little maybe a little easier to see than this video. There we go. Uh, Let's add that using a jump ring. Jump ring. And I'm, I'm always telling people to make sure to twist open your jump rings. Twist them open like you're opening up an Oreo and not pulling them open like you pull open a hot dog. I'm going to take the rose quartz rectangle, put it on my rose gold finding. See, I said it was a rosy kind of day. And using my other pair of chain nose pliers, twist that jump ring closed and the only thing we lack now is a rose gold ear wire of course and this earring is ready to wear and now what we have to do is find somebody with three ears <laughs> Thanks for joining me at this Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me and happy beading!